Uh, can we talk about the fact that Van der Ven got injured because VAR took so long to make every decision? Legs cooled down. Uh, the added time was ludicrous. Yeah, look, there's a lot going around about that now. A lot of people have jumped onto this bandwagon that it's VAR's fault that the player got injured because they're getting cold. Look, I'm, I, I don't know either way. I don't think you know either way. None of us know either way that that's definite. Look, at the end of the day, Van der Ven makes a lot of recovery tackles. Sometimes when players are running, their hamstring can go. Sometimes it happens. Could it be because of all the standing around that the players aren't as warm as they should be? I think that's a stretch. If I'm if I'm brutally honest, I think the players should be keeping themselves warm. I think the players should be stretching. Pardon the pun, but um, mm -hmm. look, I, I, I it, it was it was going to happen at some point that one of Van der Ven or Romero got injured or suspended, and it's happened all in one game. So, yeah, look, bad times, but look, VAR is just a disgrace anyway, my friend. So um, that's my take yeah. on it. I hear you there. Um, I mean, that, that's quite a good segue, really. We've got a few more Super Chats that we'll go to that came through that are more about VAR. It's a really good segue into VAR because it has dominated the headlines a lot recently. I'm a little bit disgusted, if I'm being honest with you, with Gary Neville, with Jamie Carragher, with the pundits and the media that you know calling Arteta unhinged, essentially attacking anybody that is calling out the inconsistencies. It's almost like they're not listening to the managers. They're not listening to the fans. Forget everybody that says that there's a conspiracy against my club, because that, in, in my personal opinion, doesn't exist. I do not believe the FA, the referees, whoever it may be, the lizards that run the world are getting together and saying, let's screw Arsenal or let's screw Man United. <laughs> I don't believe it's sinister yeah. in that way. But what I do believe and what I can see with my own eyes is a lack of consistency. And uh, uh, just in the game the other night, and I spoke about this many times, I've still not seen any mainstream media out there talk about it. Jackson was given offside for ob obscuring Lucario's view. Yeah. But yet no VAR check at all for this, which is much closer with a ball hit with more velocity from a, a more acute angle. And when you say that this one was also offside, you actually get laughed at because people enjoy the fact that Man United conceded. So that's an example of many. And Spurs will have some in their favour. Arsenal will have some in their favour. And I agree with the notion that we need to call this out even if we win. We need to call this out even if our team benefits. But seeing the likes of Gary Neville say that it is dangerous for the clubs to release statements complaining about the inconsistencies or the failing to follow process, not drawing of lines, openly admitting that sometimes referees don't send players off for two yellows because they don't want to ruin games and spectacles, protocols not being followed. For them to say it's dangerous for managers and players and in turn fans to complain about these things, genuinely I think is disgraceful because you're, all we're going to do if we stop, if nobody does anything now, this is just going to continue. I personally think the, I've seen Jamie Carragher say it and Richard Keyes, both on live on television, state that, we shouldn't be complaining about this too much. We shouldn't be trying to stop managers from complaining because it's great television. And I do believe that plays a part. I'm calling it the Kardashian effect. How can we add yeah. additional drama to what's already going on? And I'm not saying the referees are making the decisions on purpose, but I believe that they're making mistakes. And if we don't come together as a footballing world, media, fan media, everyday fans, whatever it may be, and push back against this, the decisions are only going to become ever more um problematic because there is no accountability for these individuals and yeah, i'm 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 in I, I love gary neville genuinely got so much love for that guy this is probably going to stop me from ever working with him he probably doesn't know who i am and i had no chance anyway but what i'm about to say probably probably will but i've got to speak the truth it means i'll probably never get an invite onto the overlap but i've got to speak the truth and i think he is a disgrace for playing this down and saying that he's dangerous to release a statement about inconsistent and four followings of the laws of the game. I can't fathom why he thinks that. Look, um, look, I agree. I, I, I do agree with you on this. Look, I think that when we're combating VAR, and I, I, I'm sure most people now, I might be making this up, I'm sure most people now within the football world are just absolutely fed up with every game being run, run by VAR. I said to somebody yesterday, there was so much VAR during the Spurs-Chelsea game, that you might as well have got cheerleaders on to entertain the crowd, those people that pump out T-shirts out of the cannons in the NFL and that, because 
people are sitting around for four or five minutes at a time waiting for a decision to be made. Mm. I think this has got to be one of those things where it shouldn't matter if I'm Spurs, you're United, he's Arsenal, she's Villa, this, that. The, I think this is one where all the clubs need to get together as a U United and say, this has got to change because the, the, the rules are so wildly inconsistent. They're still getting decisions wrong. No one now knows the rules. If anyone can sit here and tell me they understand every rule of English football now, they're lying. No, no one seems to know what's a deliberate handball, what is not, what is the body angle, what does the lines mean on the VAR, what's this, what's that, when is a ball out, when is it not? Uh, the, the whole thing needs looking at. It's 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 slowed football down. It's killed football. There were the Chelsea Spurs game on Monday night. There were twelve minutes injury time in the, in the first half. Right. There were three goals, sorry, four goals in the first half disallowed. Right. Red card decisions being looked at, goals being looked at, offsides being looked at. Like we're trying to make, we're trying to make football an exact science with a hundred percent accuracy. Terry, it's a sport. There are some sports that are this fast paced. You cannot make this. You cannot make this 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 um a hundred percent accurate. When you slow down some of these tackles and we look at them, we go, Oh, that's a bad one. Yeah, it looks bad because you've slowed it down. In real time, it's probably not. That's offside, but is is it offside? Because what his nose hair is slightly sticking out of it's it it's gone, it's gone mad. Um, the fans are to blame as well. With the all football fans are to blame, players are to blame, refs are to blame, because What's the first thing that happens now when any decision goes against you in a football match, Terry? What do we do collectively as players and fans? Oh, VAR, VAR, look at it. Like mm. before, the man, the refs used to get things wrong, and you and you'd have your moan, and it would be, you know, you don't know what you're doing, you do, all of that kind of stuff that added to the drama. But the game played on. Now, stop four minutes. VAR having conversations with themselves, absolute baffling conversations about angles and videos and. We're, we're trying to slow down what was a very passionate, vibrant, quick game. And it's now turned into American football, so to speak, because it's stop, mm. start. Here's a stat for you. Of 100% of the, I think there was a, a 100 minutes against Chelsea the other night. Of that 100 minutes, what percentage do you reckon the ball was in play? As in the actual football being played? 39%. 43%. But do you want to know why, though, I went for about 39%? Uh, what I will say about that, though, even that's manipulation because that's about the average that the ball stays in play anyway. Does that make sense? And that's why, like, you know, 19, 45 minutes of play each half, it, you know, it's why rugby, rugby match is 80 minutes, but it lasts longer than any football match does because they stop the clock every time these things happen. And yeah. I understand the stop start. I love VAR when it first came out. I was an advocate. And the reason I was an advocate is because it was, I do want it to be as, in terms of decision making, I do want it to be as close to a um, science as possible on certain things. So, for instance, did the ball cross the line? I want to know. We've got the tech to do it, do it. And I think goal line technology is the one bit that is impressive. Brilliant. Champions League, very quickly with automated systems, they get an offside for you. Still yep. want them to show it on our screen quicker, like they do with Hawkeye in tennis, and they do with Hawkeye and and, and goal line te tech. Like get it up quicker for us because I don't trust them. I'm a bit like, no, I want to see that it was offside before I relinquish that. But it's the it's two things. The subjectivity argument has ruined this, and clear and obvious error has ruined it, and the lack of transparency. Because what's now happening is fans aren't even annoyed.